When we say we give our money to the church, we misspeak. When we say we give our money to the church, I hope we misspeak. Because if, see this is where I'm going to meddle. If you give your money to the church, I don't care if you keep it. Because I would much rather see as your spiritual guide, I would much rather see you give your money to God through the church. If you give your money to the church, you might just want to retain some control over how they use it. You might want that seat on the board or the finance committee so you can be sure that you get a say in how the club spends your money. When we give our money to God, we trust the people that God and we together have called as leaders to, to seek God's desire for the use of that money and when they spend it we're not upset because hey maybe we didn't even know about that mission but they spent it that way and that must have been what God wanted. When we give our money to God it's gone and so is anything we have to say about how it's spent. When we give our money to the church we want to be on the committee so we can say how it's spent. Or at least we want to complain about the way it's spent. A friend of mine, let me tell you, this guy was my Sunday school teacher for a while and he was the most awesome, spiritually directed person I've ever met. He decided one year, this is an old story, you can tell by the fact that he decided to drive a three-year-old Chevette, which already had 60,000 miles on it, another three years. You can also tell us an old story because you could pay off a car in three years. <laughs> he decided to drive that Chevette another three years and take the money that he was going to use to buy him a brand new Oldsmobile and give that money to the Lord to carry out a mission that the congregation had just decided to do. It wasn't like he wasn't already a tiger. Okay? It was time to buy a new car. He wanted a nice one, and he decided the mission of the Lord was more important than he drove around in a brand new car. He was an awesome example to all of us who knew him. Because his relationship with the Lord was the most single important thing in his life. And seeing what he could do to further the work of the Lord in our community and around the world was his personal mission. He was a vice president of Tom's Foods, and they're a big deal. But that was where his primary focus was. It's not on work, not even on family, but on the work of the Lord. He was something else. He didn't do all this stuff because he thought if you give enough money, you'll guarantee yourself a seat in heaven. There are people like that. There are people who think if you come to church and Sunday school every Sunday, you're going to heaven no matter what else you do Monday through Saturday. There are people who think you can get your way in there. He didn't think he didn't give like this because he thought he owed God something and he should work hard to pay it back. We all do, but can't pay it back. It's a gift of love, not expected any repayment. He gave that way because he was so thankful for the salvation that he had received from Jesus Christ. And he was so thankful for the relationship that he had with God that he just couldn't help himself. He had to give like that. He knew that the security that you can have in this life only comes from the relationship that you have with God. He was secure in who he was. I mean, he's a vice president of a major company driving to work in a three-year-old orange Chevette. 
And he was secure in his relationship with God and everybody at work. They didn't respect him because he drove a big, late model, high-end automobile. They respected him because they knew who he was. And that his priorities were straight. And that he was secure in who he was in his relationship with Jesus Christ. And it inspired people. We can do that. We can. Now, I read the other day, you never can tell what you'll read on the internet or a newspaper or a magazine, especially when you're sitting around in a doctor's office or something waiting for something to happen, which may or may not happen anytime soon. I read that the president of this great nation has urged every homeowner to go out and take a mortgage on their homes so that they will have money to spend and then go spend that money on essentially disposable items so that that money, your, the money that is in your home equity now, can be spent to jumpstart the economy. Since when did the economy become God enough to ask you to sacrifice your home to it? And if that's not what that request was about, I'll kiss your foot. Our economy in this nation is hard running for God in the hearts of every single person. It just is. And if we do not recognize that, we cannot combat it. We have to be, we are Christians, right? We are. And if we are Christians, then we work hard. Because there is so much calling on us to, you know, there are not little idols sitting out here. But there is a whole bunch of stuff that wants our undivided attention and wants to be first place in our life. If it's first place in our life, if it provides us our security, if it's the thing in which we invest the most, it's gone. And everything wants to be gone. And that's why you get that right. If you want her to, to be just like God. Everything about us craves to get our attention and be God. While this country may or may not have been founded as a Christian nation, we presently are far too focused on our money to call ourselves a Christian nation. It's time that we as Christians started paying attention to our Savior and our Lord and putting Him in first place in our life. With all these competing things, it's going to be tough to figure out how to get Him there. But that is our job if we will wear His name. <coughs> we have got to put Jesus Christ in first place in our lives, no matter if you get a really good offer for something else. In time that we put Jesus Christ in first place and in our spiritual lives, in our love, in our money, in everything that we have, it becomes everything that we have, everything we know about, comes in second, third, fourth, fifth, ninety seventh place, and Jesus Christ always comes in first. When God is in first place in our lives, when Jesus is in first place in our lives, you know what happens? Every other priority that we have shakes out into the position that God wanted it to be in in the first place. And isn't living our lives the way God we wants us to live them what we're doing here? When we learn to put Jesus first, we will be an inspiration to every single person we meet. We will live the gospel. And if we live the gospel, the one thing we won't have is empty seats. If you're a baptized Christian and not a member of this fellowship, and you hear Jesus Christ calling on you today to join together with us in service and in worship, 
Join me here at the front as we sing our hymn of invitation, I Surrender All, number 378. If there's one here this morning who is a member of this fellowship and you hear Jesus Christ calling on you to rededicate yourself to his service, join me at the front as we stand together and sing. And if there's one in this room who has never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord and you are looking for some security in your life, I will tell you he is the only place you will find it. And if you're looking for that today, come up here, join hands with me and your Savior Jesus Christ and start your walk to life everlasting with him. Let's stand together and sing, I Surrender All.